That's the McGee family car coming down 14th Street. The lady in the front seat is a Mrs. Dennison. And the lady driving the car is a Mrs. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. driving in this traffic, Angelica, although McGee always oh, says... Oh, I think your driving is fine, Molly. Watch the stoplight, dear. Stoplight where? Never mind, we passed it. <laughs> it was green, anyhow. Oh. Well, like I was saying, when that sales girl at the bon Con told me that chartreuse hat was very oh, becoming... Oh, I know, my dear. That's the same snippy little creature that said she just adored my hat. Because her mother had one just like it back in 1931. And I... <laughs> I knew she was just trying to make a sale because, oh, look at that big truck. What does he think he's doing? He wants to go so slow, why doesn't he straddle the white line like we do? <laughs> Men drivers, they're so infuriating. Do we turn left here to get to your house, Angelica? Uh, yes, but there's no left turn allowed on this corner, so do it fast. <laughs> Tell McGee to get those tires oiled. They're beginning to they're beginning to squeal so badly, and he hates to have anything. Oh. Oh. oh! What on earth was that noise? Search me. Sounded like something fell off the car. Some little part, like maybe the back seat. <laughs> maybe we better get out and look. Oh, I think we have. Why? Well. Heavenly days. What's that thing? Oh, my. I, I don't know anything about automobiles, Molly. As long as I have a good loud horn and a courtesy card from the chief of police, that's all I need. <laughs> well, I'd better take the thing home and let McGee put it back on, I guess. Well, come on. I'll take this side and you take that side. Uh, Angelica, how long has it been since your operation? Uh, three years. And yours? Five years. I guess we're safe. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Heave ho, girl! Oh. <gasps> so just as soon as Mrs. Dennison and I boosted the thing into the back seat, I hurried right home for you to look at it, dearie. Good work, kiddo, good work. Probably just some little gadget off the crankcase or something. I don't know how we two girls managed to get it into the car, McGee. Yeah? It was heavier than a Hungarian dinner. <laughs> well, leave the old master have a look at it. My gosh. Is that it? That's it. Wow, it looks like the flywheel. Wow. <laughs> Thank goodness it was something we don't need for a while. Huh? <laughs> the flies won't be really bad for another couple of months. <laughs> well, I better, better wrestle it out of there and see what it fits onto. Stand back, Tootsie. <laughs> If that thing falls on your toes, you'll have to learn to walk on your hands. <laughs> wow, is that baby heavy. What is it? One of the spark plugs? <laughs> or a piston bracelet? Piston ring. I don't know what it is yet, but I'd better get it put back on anyhow. I guess. All right, sweetheart. I've got to go in and call Mrs. Dennison. Call Mrs. Dennison? My gosh, you just left her ten minutes ago. I know, but we were so busy talking, there were a lot of things I forgot to tell her. <laughs> I'll be back out in just a few minutes. Okay, baby. Oh, there goes a good kid. But not much of a mechanic. She thinks a hose connection is a garter buckle. <laughs> Yep. As soon as I get into my coveralls, I'll fix this hi, thing. Mister. Uh, oh, <laughs> hi, Mr. Oh, hi, Jeannie. Hi. Hi. How's everything with you, sis? Have a pleasant Easter? Oh, sure, mister. Good. I had a dandy Easter, bitch. Good. My Uncle Carl gave me a little baby rabbit. <laughs> he did, huh? Mm-hmm. Sure. It was the cutest little rabbit I ever... Hmm? I says he did, huh? Did what? Gave you a rabbit. Who did? Your Uncle Carl. For what? For Easter. I know it. <laughs> Mochi, he's got long pink ears and he wiggles his nose like Grandma when she's got the hay fever. Oh. <laughs> Why do 
does she have a stubby little tail, mister? <laughs> why does he? You don't know why bunnies have them little bunches of cotton on their rumble seats instead of a real honest-to-goodness tail? You don't know? No. Do you, mister? Huh. Hmm? My gosh, I ought to. I'm the one that thought up the reason. <laughs> Tell me, mister, who are you? Will you please, mister, who? Okay, sis, I really ought to be getting to work on this car, but to me, hard work is like a dry swimming pool. Nothing to plunge into till conditions are right. <laughs> well, sir, once upon a time... There were three bears, a papa bear, a mama bear, and a baby. No, 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 no. That, that's a different story, sis. It starts off the same, I bet you. Well, I know. Lots of stories do. <laughs> Why? Well, because if you start out by saying once upon a time, it's a lot harder to check up on the facts than if you say at four o'clock yesterday afternoon or something. <laughs> oh? So... Once upon a time, there was a family of rabbits living in a fell-down oak tree. Uh, there was Buck, the papa rabbit, Molly, the mama rabbit, and Benny, the baby bunny. They all had short ears, blue eyes, and long, waving tails like foxes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Gee, blue eyes and short ears and long tails. Sure. <laughs> a busy highway, sis. And the mama rabbit kept telling Benny never, never to cross the road without looking both ways first. No. But Benny, he was a smart aleck, so one day he went across the road to get to a blackberry patch and saw a blue jay hop across the road without looking. Oh, <laughs> oh jaywalking, hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, yeah. So little Benny the baby bunny starts across, too, and wham, a big truck catches him right across the seat of his pants. If he'd have been wearing pants... And cut off his tail, all but just a little stub. And Benny hollers out, and he scrams back home. Oh, gee, poor little Benny. So his mama put some iodine on him and a big bunch of cotton. And they all had a good cry because little Benny had lost his big bushy tail. And they all spent two hours every day after that stretching their ears out so they could always hear a car coming. (laughs) And that's why they all got long ears from the stretching pink eyes from crying, and cotton on their tails to remind them to look both ways before they cross the road. <laughs> Thank you, mister. That was a dandy story, I betcha. I thought so. But why do they wear cotton on their tails to remind them? Why don't they just tie a string on their fingers? <laughs> because in this case, it was an afterthought, sis. Now, you run along. i got to get to work. So long, Teeny. So long, mister. So long. How's it going, McGee? Oh, pretty good, kiddo. Almost got the crankcase took off in it. Good for you. I'm glad one of us has a mechanical mind. Oh, it kind of runs in my family, Tootsie. All us McGees were mechanical genius. Really? My father was only three years old when he started working on a motor-driven baby buggy. Heavenly days, yeah. only three years old. Did he get it perfected? Oh, yeah, it worked wonderful, but he never used it. Why not? Because by that time, he was 22 years old and looked kind of silly riding in a baby buggy. <laughs> Hand me that monkey wrench, will you? I want a monkey with this crankshaft. Well, hello, hello, missus. Oh, hello, Ollie. Oh, hi, Ollie. Yeah, who's saying hi, Ollie? It's McGee, Ollie. He's under the car. Oh, oh hello, McGee. <laughs> I see a foot stacking out, but I didn't recognize the heel. <laughs> what are you doing under there, McGee? Or is one excuse for lying down someplace as good as another? Huh? <laughs> well, he's working, Ollie. I was downtown today, and something fell off the car, and McGee is putting it back. You know, the same thing happened to me last week, missus. Something fell off my car on Oak Street. Yeah, what was it, Ollie? The flywheel? No, it was my littlest kid, Lars. Oh. <laughs> He was snitching a ride on the bumper, but he hit a bump, and the bump's loose from the bumper. Heavenly days, he must have been pretty well banged up. Not until his mama see he wasn't hurt, then she banged him up good. <laughs> How is your wife, Ollie? Well, I hope. Well, I hope so, too, McGee. <laughs> I'm just looking her downtown to obstetrician to get new glasses. Oh, uh, I don't think you mean an obstetrician, Ollie. <laughs> An obstetrician is a guy that's 80 years old. Oh. <laughs> no, 
Oh, no, dearie. That's an octogenarian. What Ole meant was an optometrist. Sure, a fellow that always looks on the cheerful side of everything. <laughs> or obstetrician is like that. <laughs> You're wrong again, Ollie. You're thinking of an optician. Yes, Ollie. An obstetrician is a baby doctor. Hey, now you're wrong, Mrs. Our obstetrician is no baby doctor. He's 65 years of old. <laughs> no, Ollie, she means that you go to an obstetrician when you're expecting an addition to the family. Sure, that's why she has eyes examined by obstetrician. Huh? She gets some dark glasses, though she don't get so much sun. It's daughter we want this time. That's what I'm saying. the big piece that fell off the car? I got it under here with me, kiddo, so I can match it up with whatever place it fell off of. I think if I can get this little bolt here loosened, I can... What's that? <coughs> McGee, what are you doing? I'm drowning. <laughs> I struck oil. I'm <laughs> coming down right in my face. Oh, Hand me that punch of waste. All right. My goodness. Look at your face. I haven't seen such an oily-looking character... <laughs> Since you introduced me to the man with the diamond stick pin who sold you the half interest in the emerald mine for $30 and took your wa- wristwatch for security. Yeah. I sure took that slicker, didn't I? You did? Yeah. That wristwatch was only worth nineteen fifty. <laughs> Just goes to show that a fellow's up and alert and... Oh, hi, Junior. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Wally. Hello, pal. If that's you with the greasy face. Yeah, that's me, Okay. Hey, do you know anything about internal combustible motors? Well, sure. I know all about them, pal. I drove a Johnson Wax truck for years. Big 15-wheel, baby. 15 wheels? Sure. Don't you mean 14 or 16, Mr. Wilcox? They don't have an odd number, do they? Sure. The odd one is to steer with. (laughs) Oh, How did you ever get promoted to salesman, kid? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I was driving along one foggy night near Milwaukee with a loaded glow coat when a bird threw, uh, flew through the windshield and knocked me cold. <laughs> <laughs> when I came to, I saw it was a carrier pigeon with a message on his leg. Uh-huh. It said, help, and being held by gangsters in the old mill. Signed, the Johnson's Wax Sales Manager. Oh, of all the phony, corny, dime novel yarns. Well, sir, I had no gun, so I grabbed a couple of large cans of Johnson's glow coat, rushed out to the old mill, knocked at the door. When the gangsters opened it, I wound up with a can of glow coat and knocked them cold. Well, that's one way to deliver the goods. Yep. (laughs) Sales manager said anybody who was as handy with a glow coat pitch as I was ought to be a salesman. Personally, I think you're a better truck driver myself. <laughs> you're as heavy-footed as you are heavy-handed. And believe me, I like being a salesman, particularly now when I can make housewives an offer like Johnson's Giant Can Bargain, where they get one-third more of this grade water-repellent glow coat for the same price. I was shopping with Mrs. Dennison this morning, and we both bought several cans of it, and Mrs. Dennison said she always... Go to your dealer can. now, and that's what you get. <laughs> one-third more glow coat for the same old price. Mm-hmm. A pint and a third for the price of a pint. A quart and a third for the price of a quart. For the finest water-repellent floor protection that money can buy. Johnson's glow coat that stays on and stays bright through repeated damp mopping. Why, when you realize... Hey, hey, when you hey, consider, hey, hey, You hey, just put hey, it on... Hey. You Waxy. Yes, pal. Look, Mr. Wilcox, just between us and off the record... Uh... How did you really get a job as a Johnson salesman? Oh, Mr. Johnson's my cousin. <laughs> See you later, kid. <laughs> get to work, dearie. Maybe you can get that odd part back in place before dark. I think I got it figured out now, kiddo. If I can just loosen the pan on the hydrochloric drive, it'll slip the fan belt off the generator, you see. That'll give me a little more play in the differential. (laughs) You haven't got time to play in the differential. (laughs) You just keep on working there. By the way, what's that little windmill for in front there? (laughs) That's the fan, Tootsie. What does it do? Pulls bugs into the radiator. (laughs) If it wasn't for that little gadget, the whole countryside would be infested with gnats and beetles and stuff. (laughs) Sure flies the air. Now, let me see I beg your pardon, sir. I'm working my way through college, and I'm selling subscriptions. Go away, bud. Go away. Go away. I'm busy. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Busy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. And you, I presume, are Mrs. Busy? No, I'm not. 
Well, how do you do, Mrs. Knott? <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I am Leavenworth P. Eaton. I'm working my way through college. Look, sir, can you uh, come back some other time? Mr. McGee is engaged. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> and who is Mr. McGee? I'm Mr. McGee. I thought you were busy. I am busy. When I was talking to Mrs. Knott here, she said that... Please, Mr. Eaton, I am not Mrs. Knott. She's my wife. Well, if you already have a wife, how can you be engaged? He merely meant he was engaged in fixing this automobile. Is that clear? Quite clear, Mrs. Busy. <laughs> that brat, she ain't Mrs. Busy. She's Mrs. McGee. Then who is not? Who is not what? Mrs. Not. I was talking to her a minute ago. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Straighten this guy out, will you, Molly? Glad to. Hand me that big wrench thing. No. <laughs> I mean, clear things up for him. Oh, all right. Now then, Mr. Uh... He's eating. No, I'm just chewing gum, Mr. <laughs> now then, Mr. Eaton, I am Mrs. McGee. This man here is Mr. McGee, my husband. Yeah. And you're Mr. Eaton. Have you got that down, Pat? <laughs> the lady is speaking to you, Pat. Well, I was... Doggone it, I am not Pat. I'm McGee. Now, you listen here, bud. Whatever you're selling, we a don't... A magazine, sir. What magazine can I... Look, Mr. Eaton. Thank you, Mrs. Busy. Look is a fine magazine. <laughs> Would you like it for one year or three years? You'll notice this pretty girl on the cover. Cut it out, will you? I'll be glad to, sir, if you'll hand me those shears. <laughs> I'll make a beautiful pin-up for your garage. Now, just a minute, please. This thing is getting out of hand. We don't have time. You don't have time? Well, I'll start your subscription right away, and thank you very much. One year or two? Neither one. And hey, bud. Sir? Do you like life? Oh, I love life. Well, then get out of here while you still got it. Go on. Great. Very well, sir, and thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Bisson. <laughs> Know where the part goes? I'm still looking, kiddo. I've tried it in three different places, but it don't seem to fit any place. But I'll find it. As soon as I get these last three bolts unloosened and get the flywheel housing opened up. Oh, hi, old timer. Hello, Mr. Old Timer. Hello there, daughter. Hey, Johnny. What you taking the car? A park? <laughs> nope, one of the pieces fell off downtown, old timer, and I'm trying to find out where it dropped off in it. Well, personally, kids, I was never much of a hand for machinery myself. No. I was a more sensitive type, an artistic boy, oh. poetic. Wrote my first poetry in kindergarten. Was it published? No, there was only one copy, Johnny, on the sidewall of Hooter Scotton's barn. Oh. It says, it's time you fellows knew the facts, Nancy's pants are flower sacks. <laughs> Seems a little cruel to Nancy, whoever she was, Mr. Oldtimer. Oh, Nancy loved it, daughter. Yeah. Crazy for publicity. Grew up to be a right pretty girl, too. Won a beauty contest in Atlantic City and went to Europe. Miss America? Yes, Johnny, she sure does. <laughs> I had a postcard card from her just the other day, from The Hague in Holland. She's a duchess now. Oh, married a duke? No, married a Dutchman. <laughs> lives in uh, Rotterdam. I thought she sent the postcard from The Hague. She did, Johnny. Too nice a girl to write Rotterdam on a postcard. Oh. <laughs> well, I got a date this afternoon, kids. I'm taking my girl Bessie to the opera house. We got two good seats in the balcony. The opera house? There's nothing playing there today. The opera house is dark this week. <laughs> Who's complaining, daughter? <laughs> well, so long, Johnny. Well, uh... I get this last bolt loose, I can get at the inside of the hole. Oh. Oh. Good heavens. Mm. You certainly got a big chunk off that time. <laughs> what do you call that? 
We call that the motor. <laughs> See, the flywheel ought to go in here something. No, that can't be right. Why can't it? Well, there's a flywheel already in it. <laughs> I think the car's got two flywheels. Well, this is a pretty old model. Oh, uh, there to... you are, McGee. Well, having an accident, I see. Huh? Oh, hi, LaTrivia. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Were you ever in Detroit? Yes, I've been in Detroit. Ever go through an automobile factory? Yes. Did you see them assembling automobiles? I did. Remember anything about it? Why? Because sooner or later, he's got to put this car back together, and he's going to need all the information he can get. Well, as it happens, I have some information for him. What's your license number, McGee? 986-W5-Y. 986-W5. Well, that checks with my information. Hmm? One of our traffic officers took your license number downtown this morning, McGee. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah? Well, you tell them ticket happy hooligans of yours that they got nothing on me, boy. I wasn't even out in my car this morning, so, ha-ha. No, no, but Molly was. Hmm? Molly, do you remember doing anything wrong this morning? Well, my goodness, Mr. Mayor, if you're referring to that little bitty left turn I made on 14th Street, where the sign said no left turn, uh, I wouldn't have done it, only I had to take Mrs. Dennison home, and how does the city know where she lives when I'm uh, driving the... No, no, no. <laughs> that was not what I meant. What did I do wrong? You ran over a piece of city property, stopped your car, picked it up, and drove away with it. What? It's lying right there under your car, McGee. Huh? Give us back my manhole cover. Manhole cover? <laughs> I made a mistake this time, dearie, but the city doesn't do so well themselves. Huh? There's a terrible big hole in the pavement down on 14th Street. There is? Right near where I picked up that iron thing. <laughs> is it uh, about the size of the cover that you... The, the, Say, the... that's an idea. They could use that thing I brought home to cover that hole with, McGee. <laughs> I think I'll call up the mayor and suggest that... No, he... no, no, Tootsie, no. 